Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about front-end and best practices. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, do you think the front-end community will ever develop best practices the same way the back-end community has? Or do you think it's impossible because front-end development is inherently chaotic? <clears throat> well, uh, I, I, I just want to say something immediately, and I think that it is a bit of a stretch to say that front-end development is chaotic. Uh, I'm not saying that that's not the case, uh, that you might, ex if you're getting into that space, that you might feel that there are no rules. But if you spend some time in the front-end community, uh, I think that you sh you would find that there are actually rules, there are best practices, there are things uh, that you could call a structure if that makes sense. The thing that usually gets people confused is that there's such a diversity, there's no real strong consensus on what testifies as a very good practice. There are no like there there are no commandments if that makes sense. There are no uh, like thou shalt shalt always use uh, style sheets instead of the CSS and JS solutions or switch whatever like do, do however you want, <laughs> make it however you want, right? Uh, that's not really the case. And I think that the reason why that is is because in the front end community there is simply more, I'm not saying more go necessarily harder things, but I'm saying that there's more going on. What I mean by that is that there is there's a wider range of tools and practices that go into the daily job. That is one thing that I, the backend uh, community doesn't really, uh, the, the extent, like they have it, and that's the thing that I, th I think that this is a little bit warped, because the thing is, guys, even the backend community has problems deciding on certain things. There are absolutely rules, like you can say, well, we follow the solid principles. Okay, what does that mean, specifically? Do you, because we can absolutely argue about that. And then there are people who say, we, we do domain-driven design. Okay, that's great. What does that mean to you? There are rules, but the interpretations of those rules vary even in the back uh, backend development. And I can tell you from experience that just because you are a backend developer, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you know, you're, you're walking on rainbows or something like that, and every all the code is really nice. Because the backend development uh, situation can be really, really piss poor as well, with f really poorly. Uh, structured co logic or like or um, uh, architectures that doesn't really make sense or naming conventions or different types of patterns that just doesn't really make sense uh, and so it does happen on the back end as well the reason why we usually I think at the very least say that oh, the problem is in the front end is because front end does it, it, it's it's a younger area if that makes sense but it's not just about the fact that it's younger the history of backend development is longer so it's had more time to develop really really strongly established patterns and uh, architectures based on the input of people who have been in that space for years and years and years my friend we have some really strong gurus uh, that is in the backend space that have written numerous books and given us a and an, like a complete library of different types of guidelines for how we should do things Frontend is not there just yet. We're in that space right now. You're basically, in many cases, I would say, living in the era right now where we're trying to fi figure all of that out. In many cases, we have figured some stuff out. And as I was saying, if you've been a frontend developer for quite some time, you will know that there are certain tools that you should or should not be using. There are certain practices that you should be using or should not, depending on what paradigm you choose, right? But just as with the backend developers having a problem deciding on, okay, are we using functional programming or ba or object-oriented programming? And what does that actually mean? Does like Because each code piece can be interpreted in different ways. You should do it this way or you should do it that way. It should use an if statement or a switch statement. What should we use, right? Those types of conversations and discussions, they are happening in the front end as well. It's simply the fact, in my experience at the very least, that the focus is less on certain practices. It's there, of course, there are discussions about practices, but it's much more about 
the experience of the person who is doing the development. I said in many videos before that I think that the biggest challenge of the front-end community at this point is to get people in the community, uh, not just the front-end community, but also the people who are actually going to contribute to the front-end code in any meaningful way, to respect the front-end code and actually adopt good coding practices because the whole conversation in most of the the um, front-end community is not about how do we structure good projects that scale to really large sizes the discussions are what tools are you using are you using okay, what, what practices have you decided on in this specific project and that's something that kind of comes for free in the back-end space because you have in many cases if you say for the sake of argument if you use .NET or like C sharp or something like that. You don't have to have an opinion on, you can of course, but for the most part, you have all the things that you need. Those practices, those questions and discussions, they've already been answered for you. Uh, same thing with Java. Like if you pick Java as a platform, the only thing you really need to take a standpoint on is, okay, well, we have all this history with like how to do Java development, so we kind of know how we should should do this stuff. It's sort of decided for us. And then the only other question is, okay, should we use Spring, Spring Boot, or should we use like what framework do we use? And then that's kind of it. In front then, you have to answer questions about, okay, well, okay are you going to use an SBA? Which SBA? Uh, and what are the libraries that you're going to need to use with that thing? Uh, or what test runner are you going to use? Because there's multiple ones to pick from. Um, should you use JAR and NPM? Like what should you use? There are so many ways for you to structure a front-end stack and there are no right answers at this point or there are no definitive uh, things that you can say that oh this one is going to be better or that one's going to be better and it just continues. The diversity in terms of tooling and decisions that you have to make on behalf of a front-end product is enormous. Add to that that most people who do front-end development have I, w I like to call it less respect for the work than they have in backend. I've always experienced, almost always, this kind of attitude towards front-end development uh, that where you say that, well, if it works, it works, right? You don't, because you don't have that history of quality practices to leverage. There's not an, like the community is simply not focusing as much on the quality of the software they are, are they are producing in the front end space as they should. And I think that that is the cure that needs to happen. And I do believe that we're moving in the right direction. I'm simply stating that it's going to take some time. And I don't think that we're in a, I don't think it's impossible. And I don't even, I, I wouldn't even go as far as to say that front end development is chaotic. chaotic. I think that the community and all of these inter -disc these discussions about what's right and what's wrong and how do we do this or do we do that that's the problem the chaos isn't in the the uh, the in the front end space because it has to be there it is because we simply can't decide on how should we do this thing i've never met a skilled front end developer working on a product by themselves that couldn't produce like if, if they really wanted to do a really nice working large scale uh, scalable solution the problem usually comes when you have multiple developers working on the same code base and it really does come down to that to that thing i was saying i think that has more to the reason behind that is simply because the community is having problems deciding on what should we do and what should we avoid so what i want you to take away from this is that i think that there if you look at the backend community, they have a history, like the, the history in backend development is a little bit longer and they are multiple almost religious texts on how to do backend development and standard programming things. I think that that is something that, it, and it did take some time for us to produce that. It has taken many, many years for us to get to that point of maturity in the backend space. And add on top on the, of that, that there are less, quote unquote, technologies and libraries and different types of considerations in the backend space, in many cases, at least at the code level, that you have to take, have an opinion on and you have to discuss with your coworkers on how to do A or how to do B than it is in the front end space. I mean, just adding CSS into the mix adds another completely new dimension of problems to, that you have to take care of in the front-end space. So the complexity or, or the, the likelihood that you will have a difference of opinion or do things in different ways, it's, it's kind of there immediately. Uh, and it's, it's a difficult problem to, dis, uh, to, to solve, right? But if you look at the backend community, you will see, I think, most of the time that there are many of these type of inter 
like decisions that you have to decide on do you function do you do functional programming or do you do object oriented programming if you do that what does that actually mean and so forth these things are happening in the back end just as in the front end the problem with front end is simply that it's less mature and the community hasn't really gotten to a point where we have a very good solid set of standards that we all agree on are supposed to be hey this is the way we're doing things and until we can get to that point i think it's going to continue this way but i don't think uh, I, I i do believe that it's going to happen i just think that we need to give it time and we need to continuously focus on more at the very least from this is me saying it I believe that the solution is focus on the quality of the code that you are producing. It does like decide on something that works for your project, and this commit to writing code in the front end space with the same level of respect that you show the back end code. That is step number one. Have a great day.